they've actually done it. I was very doubtful after Asuna came out that Demon Lord Kirito would come to this game until probably next year. They proved me wrong. Holy baloney, he became a unit. Let's go, he looks so cool. I'm very surprised. So the third week for an April Fool's event. So Grand Quest Fantasy 3, Advent of the Demon Lord. God, I'm so excited for him. And it's weird because the event that he goes with is Rondo of the Fragile Blade again. You know, progressive. This ain't even progressive. <laughs> it's just, it's just Demon Lord Kirito. I don't mind. So before you ask, he is a limited unit. So he will not be coming back unless something special is going on and the past times we had limited reruns twice they weren't really as good what i'm basically saying is get him while you can now if you want him but we're here to talk about if he's good or not and if you should scout for him so step one and three 50 off step five and seven you have a 50 percent chance of getting the kirito and then on step eight and above you have 1.5 times higher chance of getting a four star and if you do get a four star it should be the kirito there's also the chance that you can get the pickup selected water element characters which uh it's not just him there there's a couple others so keep in mind when you do the scout uh you may get shafted because the rates aren't that great so don't get your hopes up all right the arrogant demon lord kirito the only reason he kidnapped asuna was because he liked her that's it. <laughs> Anyways, 2,550 attack. That is high. But I think the highest a uh, character has is 2,600. So he's very close to having one of the highest damage in this game. Plus, he's also, he's decently fast. 316 speed. That's pretty good. Now, he's a break and assault and a charge unit. He's a back unit. So it kind of makes you wonder, does he have a break stack or does he have a charge stack? Or maybe both? Well, I'll just tell you now, he only has a break stack, but we'll look at that later. So anyways, his break, a strong stack slash attack raises attack and crit by 10 percent for two turns and then typical break stuff now we'll, we'll talk about the assault uh after i talk about charge real quick now his charge is a strong slash attack while also doing the same buffs raises attack and crit by 10 percent for two turns and then the typical charge stuff except it's 18.5 percent is that normal i mean oh you joke no you're, you're losing like 1.5 percent charge a little bit of a stinky charge right there lose out 1.5 percent that's important so anyways there's a reason why i skipped this all until now so slash attack extra strong already he's not an enhanced mode unit but imagine if he was enhanced mode look at these buffs so his damage will increase by 15 percent if your attack buff is 15 percent or more and then an additional 15 percent when your buff is 30 percent or more but not only that which is the typical like high damage buffs for typical characters if his crit is 10 percent or more you have another 15 percent more damage and if your crit is 30 percent or more you have another additional 10 percent uh damage increase so you'll have your buffs plus the additional damage so he, yeah he's he's gonna be strong this this boy here God, he's going to do so much damage. A typical hard hitting unit would only have the attack buff 15% or more, 15%. And then if it's 30% or more, you get another 15%. But no, this goes beyond <laughs> and does even more, but with your crit buff. So high crit, high attack, high damage. It's got to be insane. And then you look at his incarnate Armageddon Slash. Incarnate Slash attack on a single enemy while doing the same buffs as the assault in case you want me to read it out damage increased by 15 percent if your attack buff is 15 percent or more an additional 15 percent if your attack buff is 30 percent or more and then a damage increased by 10 percent when your crit buff is 50 percent or more and then another additional 10 percent when that crit buff is 30 percent or more so yeah, he's gonna be scary he may not be enhanced mood but these buffs sound insane. Now, I'm just very curious to see how much damage he'll actually deal with everything going on. Now, with his Imaginarians, uh, he's increasing more attack for an unlimited amount of turns, increasing crit damage by 50% at the start of the battle for two turns when there's fire element enemies. They're making up <laughs> for the lack of water. God damn, this boy is strong. Now, special partner is Asuna. You can't tell me that next week is going to be another Asuna water. Let me guess, same outfit, different element. But he'll start the battle with 25% percent extra incarnate at the beginning of the battle when there's a fire element enemy and then increase attack of all water element party members by one with his member skill and of course he'll have his incarnate combo and like i mentioned earlier he has break stack so he does not have charge stack which i don't really mind i mean if i use the season pass yui she has a break stack 
with our short wait time break. So I'm pretty sure I'll be using her a lot for her break, but I mean, I'll use his too. So he is a, a very much a heavy hitter for water element characters. Now he's also a dual blade character. So it might be even stronger than what we might think, depending on his weapon. Now, so far out of every water element character, this dude is insane. In terms of water element characters, he's definitely the, the hardest hitting one out there. But is he super needed? He's another damage dealer. Now, if you're new to the game, I do believe he could carry you in this game. He's not AoE, so I wouldn't say for new players, like, you you just gotta get him immediately. Someone like Desilber who did have an AoE is like, you should probably have him because he'll carry you. This Kirito was, will also carry you, but for the veteran people, uh, he's definitely hard hitting. If you care about rankings, you need to get this dude. If you don't care about rankings, then you don't really need him. But definitely, if you want to deal a lot of damage, uh, especially if it's like a water ranking. Um, yeah, I would say you should definitely get this dude. Who knows when will be the next time we'll ever get a character like this. He's going to fit nice here somewhere. I, I don't know, but he'll fit nice somewhere. He's definitely someone to level 120. And I can already see who I'm getting rid of the team. I'm sorry, Adis. But I don't even think I'll use you. Because with the buffs, all I need is the Unital Ring Alice. The Unital Ring Alice is more of a summon that you should have because she has the recollection field, which is pretty nice. And also her attacks give buffs. I am going to need a, a charge stack unit, but there doesn't seem to be one. Maybe the next week character. I mean, I guess some additional notes. Let's say you don't want the Kirita. I mean, if you have the the eye patch Adis. I mean, she does deal quite a bit of damage on her own as well. Only problem with her, uh, she doesn't have break stack. But if you got the season pass Yui, I guess you don't have to worry about break stack too much because uh, she'll handle it for you, especially her other break. Now, all I'm hoping is that he gets the red eyes in battle. Probably not, but it would have looked hella sick. Anyway, I'm hyped up for this character. First time I'm actually hyped up about a character in a while. Thank you so much for watching this video of Soda Online Unleashed Blading. If you guys enjoyed, why not leave a like, comment, and subscribe if you are new. And if you want to join, I have a Discord at the bottom of the description. You click on that link and you're sent right to the Discord. But thank you so much for watching. My name is Kaz. Hope you have a fantastic day. And we are pulling that dang Kirito tomorrow. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.